the 911 Calls Podcast with the operator. Did you say? Um, Prozac. Prozac. Oh, okay. Prozac. You don't take it anymore? All right. Oh, hi. Well, <laughs> oh, hello, Jess. Hello. Operator. Sam. Op- operator. You can call me whatever. You can call me whatever. Just kidding. It's funny. Uh, on the Never Daily and then on uh, 911, I don't know. I can't remember if it was the last one I mentioned, just killing the op. And uh, wow, the, the the number of messages I got from, that was rough. That was a lot. It's very great. I'm very grateful. It was overwhelmingly positive. Let's not go there again, but. But um, no, let's not. Let's not go there again, ever again, Do not talk about that you are loved that end of story yes and that was you know i wasn't digging for compliments so i i you know i appreciate everybody reaching out and i was having a bit of a low moment and now i'm high again (laughs) so okay on the uncut we were asking a bunch of get to know you questions to find out more about things and i'll say it off the front here if if you if you don't listen to the uncuts because you're unable, did you know that we have plus eleven fifty nine plus dot com? If you want to pause this recording right now and just open up a browser tab and go to eleven fifty nine plus dot com, and then let the episode play out, and then at the end be like, oh yeah, I bar- I book I, I I opened a tab in my browser for eleven fifty nine plus dot com. I I could go there and subscribe to hear all of these uncuts that they speak of hundreds of hours of very meaningful conversation i think we've cured cancer on them we've we've resolved world hunger uh we we've talked a lot of smack about other podcasters i've sworn before so if any of those things are appealing to you it's commercial free it's commercial free yeah that that's commercial free that's a big one. Yes. So if you right now are like one of the things that I that hurts me the most is listening to local ads for Taco Bell or a car dealership. If you want that to stop, 1159plus.com. And you probably already spent money at a coffee shop today that cost as much as a whole month of plus. So so do that. I also wanted to give a little bit of a pitch for uh, where else we are. So if you want to find 911 Calls podcast elsewhere, we have a very burgeoning community on Facebook, 911 Calls podcast on Facebook. Check us out there. We're also on Instagram. We're on X, formerly Twitter. And I think we're even on TikTok. And uh, I was just telling on the uncut that we have some new video editors that that are creating social media content, reels, shorts, all the whatever they I'll call them shorts and skirts, whatever they are. And so a lot of video content is going to be ending up uh, barfing all over those social media platforms here very soon. So, you know, check us out. Facebook's probably one of our, one of our bigger places. Also, we have SMS messages now. So if you want to get text message alerts from us, why wouldn't you? You can you can do that. Go to 1159media.com forward slash text, and that will take you to the, the sign up so you can get text messages from us. What do you get when you get those? You get alerts about new merch that's available. You get alerts about when we're recording live. Like right now we have 18 people that have accessed us to the back door and they're sitting there, they're chatting, we're having a great time. They're, they might say, they might swear or they might not swear, but it's always fun. We're going to also do an AMA after this with them. It's a great time. So you get alerts about, you're like, hey, you get an alert on your phone that says, we're recording now. Jess is holding up her hand. Why are you holding up your hand, Jess? Because it's U.S. only. So I'm sorry. It is. Yes. It's U.S. only. We haven't been able to bridge that world gap yet. And you have to sign up yourself. I can't sign you up because there's legality behind it. Like you're checking a box saying that you're consenting to us texting you. 
Think of it like a petting zoo. You can, if you own a really small petting zoo like ducks, you could go to a school and be like, hey, I have ducks. And and the school would be like, yeah, cool. And just hang out on the sidewalk. And then the kids could come out and pet the ducks. You could take that petting zoo to a school. And if that were the case, you know, we could sign you up without your knowledge. But this is more like a heavy petting zoo where we need your consent. Otherwise, you could sue us for putting your phone number into our heavy petting zoo. We need you to do it so we we can stay. Um, we're not complicit in you getting those. So anyway, that's a thing. Um, all right. The URL that you gave is not working for me, so... No, I know it's not because I'm going to make it work before this episode goes live. <laughs> I'm doing things on the fly. I'm such a big nerd, Jess, that I could say things like that knowing that I'm going to do a 301 redirect like like that. It's going to be so nerdy and so beautiful, but I'm thinking on the fly and I'm going to make that happen, you know, so 1159media.com forward slash text if you... That's so... It's so op of you. Okay. Anyway. Holding myself to a standard. To the show. All right. To the show. So on the uncut, we were asking some questions to get to know each other. And Jess's internet cut out. And so we Chase and I finished the, inter inter the, the uh, uncut on our own. We got deep into th to a lot of topics, like mainly all the mistakes that Chase has made in his life and what he regrets what recommendations he's taken from me, how how his life has improved to the point where it is now, I don't want to say because of my involvement in his life, but that that he's in a better place than he's ever been. And it's hard to not draw a line between where he was and where he is now and not see that that line just is kind of, just says 1159 media, 1159 media, 11, all the... Okay. Anyway... Jess, I have one final question for you that I wanted to ask you on the uncut, but I'm going to ask you here because it is a bit cogent. Are you ready for this one? And just like the uncut, if you don't have an answer right away, I have one that I'll give from my life experience to give you a minute to think. Of course. <laughs> what, what, what is the most mischievous thing you did as a child? Meaning under the age of 18? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Let's go with that. Okay. I think I've already told what what I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. What did you do? I would take my dad's car at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've talked about that. I mean, that's the most that's really mischievous it. thing. I would take their car. I would take my friend's parents' car, like with my friend's. Um, yeah, that was the interesting part about that is, is you were the self-described, self-ascribed Uber for your friend's parents' cars. Like your friends would be like, hey, could you come and drive my parents' car for us? Yeah. And you would, that was your job. Like without a license. Yeah. It, and I did, I was, Oh, this is not the uncut, but I, it doesn't really matter. But like my parents were pretty strict. And so I would always say I'm staying at Becky's house. And I would right nine times out of 10, I was not at Becky's house. Or I'd say we're going to the movie and we'd go to a field party. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Saw a lot of movies. <laughs> that you didn't see. Didn't see. Ken would argue I've seen a lot of movies that I haven't seen either. But, you know, so that's a thing. But yeah, that was, I had a very, I had several years where I was living on the edge <laughs> of disaster. You're like a Bon Jovi song, just like in, in, in suburbia, in, in suburban America. I have, I have a question. I don't think I've ever asked you this. Have, were you ever picked up by the cops? Did, did anything, did you ever have any cop related stuff? No, there was. Maybe like cops maybe came to like a party or broke something up, but we never, I was never sat down and handcuffed or questioned. Cavity searched. Yeah, no cavity searches. One time, one time I was pulled over and it was like a close call of what I had in the car <laughs> before I got pulled over. 
So that was probably the closest encounter. Were you sweating bullets? Was it just nerve wracking? I knew it stunk so bad in the car. And so it was just like. (laughs) Was it a dead body or was it drugs? It was marijuana. I was going to say, you could just say it wasn't a dead body. How are you? How are you when it when it comes to police? Like I'm, I'm assuming you've gotten pulled over in in, in your adult life for speeding or whatever, right? Not past the age of like 19, because really? I would get pulled over. I got pulled over like every other month when <laughs> I was 16, 17, 18. <laughs> I think I said it before. One time, I had to take my mom with me to court because I was underage and going like 20 over the speed limit. So the judge said, you can't just pay the fine. I want your mom here to know what you've done. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. So I had to go take my mom to do that. How are you wow. in legal situations? Well, like, what kind of a person are you? Because there's, you know, people that are like, hey, cop. Thanks, cop. Yeah, thanks, cop. Bye, cop. Oh, no. I was raised by a cop, so I was, um, I'm always very respectful and very forward with what is going on. I don't, I'm a big law abider. I'm a big advocate for not drinking and driving. So I think that would be a stressful situation if you were like under the influence of drugs or alcohol and you were maybe pulled over, but I try to stick, you know designated driver especially as i'm older and i have kids so yeah it's just and if i was pulled over luck knock on wood never really been in a serious car accident or anything like that so oh that's good yeah hopefully you know it i i can understand you know some people that are like hey i've been doing it forever you know i drive i you know go out and party and i drive home and i've never been you know nothing's ever happened you just hope you hope, right? And you shouldn't. You shouldn't hope. Shouldn't shouldn't put yourself in that sitch. The sitch. Okay. Well, I wanted to uh, dig in a little bit about the area that this nine one one call takes place in. So th- this is Camden, New Jersey, and I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but in my head, I've never seen New Jersey as a state. It always seems just like an appendage of New York to me, like like a, you know, like a suburb, like a like a suburb of New York. Like it never I don't know why it never felt like a state to me. Does that make sense? I get what you're saying, but there's obviously other parts of New Jersey that aren't close to New York, I guess. It also, this is an interesting thing about New Jersey personal experience is like when I think of New Jersey, I don't know why. I I know this isn't even accurate, but like I think of like Rocky type of characters in like gray sweatsuits jogging around, punching the air and like a car manuf That's Philadelphia. Yeah, right. I know. But like, and there's like car manufacturing plants and everything's kind of in like 1970s color, color tones. And like, I've got a very like (laughs) Hollywood, you know, painted picture in my head of what New Jersey's like all the time. But then one time on business, I had to fly into New Jersey. And as you're coming into New Jersey, you know, you're coming over the, the the freeway, and so freeways and highways. But when you look down, you can see what what the rest of the world thinks of, like what the media or or entertainment has kind of painted a picture of what New Jersey is like. You can see it around the freeway and highway, like it, it bleeds out, like maybe a mile from the highway, and it's it's what you'd expect, but. As the plane, you know, the plane's pretty high in the air because that's how planes fly normally. But it, outside of that, 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 that vein along the, the highway, which is very urban, it is unbelievably beautiful. Like there's, there's tiny rolling hills and, and, and tucked inside of deciduous trees. There's, there's fingers of roads that, that go into the, into like these little forests. And then there's like a, there, you know, there's just like a spur of little drives that go to these beautiful homes that have probably been there for a long, long time. Like I was very impressed to know that 
it's sort of like nobody, when you think of New York, you don't think automatically of upper state New York, which is, which is much more outdoor, much more agrarian, you know, right. not urban. But, but Camden, New Jersey is city. Though it's right over the river from Philadelphia. Yeah, I was just trying to give New Jersey a shot before I really. Okay, I'm like it's literally in Philadelphia's backyard. Yeah, yeah. I was just <laughs> okay. Basically, you know, it's sort of like it's sort of like when you meet somebody who is extremely just toxic, but you feel bad that you're telling everybody that doesn't know this person of their toxicity. So you're like, but you know, she's a really good. She's got good fashion sense. And I mean, you know, she's kind of funny. So you try to like play up some of good parts of it. So I was trying to do that with New Jersey before I com- you know, drop the bomb on, on what's what is Camden. Say I'm looking at Camden photos. It's it's what you'd expect, right? I mean, it looks like downtown St. Louis. Yeah. Right. Parts of it. It looks like downtown downtown everywhere. I just kind of yeah, that's kind of the way I I look at it. Okay, so well Camden Camden's got some interesting stuff about it. It once was the home to the world's this is gonna blow you away, Jess. I know you were probably seeking the answer to this all along, and I'm about to give it to you. Camden was once the home of the world's largest collection of antique trucks. Did you know that? I I do know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I and I'm probably it's probably a load off of your load off your back. But there's the American Truck Historical Society Museum based in Camden boasted a collection of over a hundred antique trucks, some dating back to the early 1900s. And I I know now you're like how you're probably Google mapping it right now to see how close that that historical society museum is to you. Uh, weird point about that is everything about that sentence that I just said is in the past tense, and I did not research it well enough to know if that historical society museum is still even there. So I don't know if you can even go there anymore. The first drive-in movie theater was in Camden, New Jersey. Did you know this? First drive-in movie theater. And funny, fun fact to know and share, if you map birth rates in uh, or births in Camden, New Jersey, if you map that year over year or month over month with the in with the introduction of the world's first movie theater drive-in movie theater, there's a massive spike nine months after the drive-in movie theater. <laughs> Was put in. Do you have you have sources for that? Yeah, yeah, I got I got graphs. I got graphs. Okay, can't wait to see that later. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you later. It's it's hard. It's not good. Graphs aren't good for podcasting. But the Camden Drive In opened in 1933. More time well spent. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another reason. So the drive-in movie theater opened in 1933, and you might be like, wait a second, that seems like a poor time to open a drive-in movie theater because that was the Depression. <laughs> yeah. But people needed a, 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 a relief, a reprieve from the world. And so this drive-in movie theater offered that. Also, you know, that could also have been a, re, a contributing factor of the rise in birth rates pregnancies because the depression everybody was nobody was working <laughs> so they were working on other stuff if you know what i mean Ugh. here's a weird one the the city of camden was named after charles pratt <laughs> I don't even know what that means. The, the 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 sentence reads: "The city of Camden was named after Charles Pratt, first Earl Camden, an English lawyer, judge, and politician." Oh, so apparently his name is Charles Pratt, but you also bolt on because it sounds like he's British. You also have to bolt on. So whenever you like 
yelled across the room to Charles, you'd have to say, Charles Pratt, first Earl Camden, please come here, your sandwich is ready. So apparently, it's not really named after him, if i got to be honest. I mean, you could have called it Earl, New Jersey, and said it's named after Charles Pratt. <laughs> so, I kind of feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. Interpreting chat GPT, apparently. Yeah. Did you know... This is a the, this is right up your alley. Did you know that the most decorated battleship in US Navy history is the battleship New Jersey, which is the most decorated battleship in US naval history? I I have seen that. Yes. You've seen that? You've seen the battleship? I was in Philadelphia in September. Oh of yeah. Last year 2023. So. so you saw that you saw the battleship. So this actually was a was a parallel uh, was something that was relevant. Okay, I feel like we're on to something. All right, have you seen this? Then have you seen the first complete dinosaur skeleton ever found in North America? It was it was discovered in Haddonfield, just outside of Camden. It was a hadrosaurus discovered in 1858 by William Parker Folk which the Hadrosaurus is named after William Parker Folk. Just kidding, it's not, but that makes about as much sense. Anyway, here's, here's just a couple more things, because, I, because I'm going to go ahead and, nah, I was going to give something away about the call. Because we're not far enough into the call. Here's the thing. Once we cross the 20-minute line and we haven't started the episode, I'm like, you know what? If you're still listening, you're, good. you're probably in it in it to win it with the conversation and the jibber jabber, or you've already turned it off. So here's a couple more things for the next barbecue you're at. Did you know that there was a disappearance of, of a cat in Camden, New Jersey called the Camden cat? Yep. I know you're like, what? In 2023, the city of Camden the whole city was captivated by the story of the Camden Cat. It was a mysterious feline that roamed the streets of the city wearing a tiny top hat and a monocle. <laughs> the cat became an instant local... You're kidding. No. The cat became an instant local celebrity with residents snapping photos and sharing them on social media. But one day... The Camden cat vanished without a trace. The city was left wondering what happened to their beloved four-legged friend. And nobody knows to this day. Also, the cat just could have like scratched off the hat and monocle and is still hanging out, but just nobody knows it's that it's that cat, you know. Oh man. Here's here's one more mystery for you, if that wasn't mysterious enough. 2022. The whole city of Camden again, but they were all baffled. Everybody was baffled by the sudden appearance of hundreds of colorful balloons floating above the city. The balloons, which were released by an unknown source, caused quite a stir with residents and local authorities trying to determine their origin. The mystery was never solved, and the balloons remain a whimsical and unexplained occurrence in Camden's history. This happened in 2022. I have an idea on what's happened here. Sudden appearance, hundreds of colorful balloons floating above the city. No one knows who released them. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the city itself, no human involved, the city itself released a barrage of colorful balloons to to state that it was the first city to come out as gay. I think that's what's happened here. No people were involved, but the city, the ground itself was like, I'm gay. And it won. That's, that's how it came out. I think that's possible in this day and age. I think that's what happened. Do you think that's possible? <laughs> I think at this point, we should just do ads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Just because you said it, here's where we're putting the ads. Right here. All right, we're back. Jess just forced ads on everybody, so... 
I know you're probably all mad about that. Probably were wondering, you wanted me to talk more about the the city, but I'm not. I was just trying to get you to stop talking about. Okay, I'll stop. How about I get into the case? So this case here. Today we're talking about Siobhan Thomas and her son, Zari Thomas, and their life and the custody case of her son. It's a tapestry of pretty complex and heart-rending challenges, and it's intertwined with issues of mental health and substance abuse, not by Zari because he was two and he didn't have the capability to do any of those things. So we've got to attribute those things to Siobhan. And in this case, that's true. Siobhan had her her times with mental health issues and substance abuse. So the journey began with a distressing incident that happened back in 2010, where Siobhan was struggling with substance abuse, specifically the use of something called wet. Do you know what wet is, Jess? I have no idea what that is. Wet is marijuana that is laced with PCP. Oh, yeah. We don't dabble in (laughs) PCP. And it probably has other street names. I wanted to look up the street names and wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I said, I said, we don't dabble in PCP. That's crazy. Okay. I thought you said I've dabbled in PCP. No, 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 no. no. Fun fact, a question, you know, and share answer this one for me. Question for a fun fact. Jess, have, have, to your knowledge, have you, have you ever partaken of a substance that you're like, in hindsight, you're like, yeah, there was something else in that. Yes. Really? Did it mess you up or like what what happened? If you can tell. Way more awake than I should have been. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. The other day I was getting in the car, my whole family's in the car, and they were waiting to go and I was late getting in the car. And I got in the car and forgot that I had a splitting headache. So I ran in the house and opened the nearest cupboard that I could think had maybe some medicine in it. And it was this little little tray bucket holder thing of medicine. But my house is full of small children, small girls, and a 100-pound wife. So all that was in there were children's liquid Tylenol. And I was like, that'll probably work if I take enough. So I just grabbed the bottle and opened it. And then I think it was probably three gulps, big, you know, three gulps, pretty much emptied the bottle. Oh, no. And I didn't have a headache afterward. And I also rewrote a Beatles album. (laughs) So that was a good time. Anyway, wet is marijuana and PCP. Okay. Yeah. And in 2010, uh, Siobhan, struggling with abuse of this this, uh, combination drug, experienced a blackout in a park. During this episode in the park, she left Zari unattended in a car. And the situation led to her first loss of custody of Zari, It was a bit of a wake-up call, highlighting her battle with the addiction for her, kind of set the tone, and it impacted her ability to care for her own child. And so following that park incident, Siobhan faced some child endangerment charges. However, the charges were eventually dropped due to issues with a witness. She was in a park, and they realized that the witness was a tree. That's it. And so it was hard to get answers out of. Or there was a witness and they just decided not to testify. So despite this, the incident had already set in motion a series of events that would see Zari placed in the care of relatives. So Siobhan's road to reunification with her son was fraught with a lot of obstacles as she was required to undergo treatment for her substance abuse and some mental health issues that she was struggling with. And during that period, the DCF or Department of Children and Families 
they played a pretty significant role in her life and in the life of Zari. So they initiated a lot of very regular visits to the family. They provided extensive support. They facilitated uh, counseling services for her, including substance abuse testing and treatment along the way. And they were all, all of those things were kind of interventions that were part of a broader effort to support Siobhan coming back into recovery and eventually reunifying her with Zari. The court, I think this is a good example of, you know, the court really succeeding in, in, it's a success story, DCF and the court closely monitored Siobhan's progress. April 2012, after extensive evaluation and upon her successful completion of required treatment programs, she was reunited with Zari and the decision taken by the court was backed by the DCF and really, I think, was a testament to her her rehabilitation at the time. Super not taken lightly by the court. It was there was comprehensive assessments and everything. So I really do, I do think it was like a kind of a success story of sorts. Right. A lot of the calls that we do or have done aren't successful like that, or the the process of protecting the children, or maybe the abused spouse isn't isn't as well done as that. So yeah, it's impressive. So all that happened in November 2010 and the process that, that led to her reunification with him in, in April of 2012, that's, that's a pretty short clip when we're talking about uh, rehabilitation and, and everything like that. So if you know anybody that's been through addiction, that's a, that's a pretty good clip right there. Fast forward to July of 2012. It's 10.30 at night, July 2012, 10.30 p.m. So a few months later for of her being reunified with Zari, who, who by the way, is two. You know, so like this, this has been a long time coming, but the kid was barely born when, when he was originally taken out of her custody. So 10.30 p.m., July 2012. The night before the incident, now, personally, I'm not surprised that there were situations the night before with 10 p.m. being bedtime. If people are up after that, there's no telling what kind of mayhem could ensue, you know, in in anyone's life. That's just you're asking for trouble if if you're out past bedtime. But anyway, sound like my grandpa. Nothing good happens after dark. Kind of reminds me of this uh, special needs gal that used to go to my church, and and um, she was just so, so sweet, but she had some hard and fast rules. She would come up to you and be like, what did you have for lunch? And I would say, oh, I, have, I haven't eaten lunch yet. It's 1230. You missed lunch. And we always, we always thought that was sweet because she had things on a schedule and she expected everybody else to be on the schedule too. Hey, you missed lunch. She had nothing to do with my lunch. She had no control over it, but yet, you know, I missed it according to her. 10, 30 PM. Yeah. That's okay. So yeah. The, the witching hour, if we, if we want to call it that because bedtime was a half hour prior anyway. Crazy things are happening. Siobhan is observed outside her home in a visibly distressed state, according to her neighbors. Notably, Siobhan is topless, which is unusual for a woman, maybe not at 1030. You know what? The devil's the devil is, has control of you at 1030 p.m. So probably every woman that's up at 1030 is topless if I'm being honest. So I'm not surprised, I guess, but she was topless and it had an unusual amount of distress in her voice, according to the neighbors, and also seemed to be kind of disoriented at the time, because when you're topless, you should be in the house. But her boyfriend was with her during this time. Uh, there are indications that 
Siobhan and her boyfriend might have been arguing that evening. One of the neighbors, Melanie, Melanie Troutman, a neighbor, witnessed the scene, and she reports seeing Siobhan clearly upset and being led back into the house by her boyfriend. Troutman's account's important because it provides a, kind of an external perspective on Siobhan's condition and behavior just hours before the incident. So at some point later that night, after the boob, the boobs were out during the, the devil's hour, the boyfriend leaves the house. It's not clear when or under what circumstances he left, but he did leave later that night, probably after clothing her and de-escalating the situation. So he left, and I don't know where in the world he could be going where he's just not going to get into more trouble with Satan. But that leads us to our phone call to 911, because that's what the show's all about 38 minutes into the episode. So are you? Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just skin. So, that's what that's yeah. what Satan says. Suggests so that's what Satan says. <sighs> we got a lot of work to do on this show. Bring the bring the level of morality up. But anyway, do <clears throat> you want want to hear the call? Yeah, let's hear it. Finally. <laughs> All right. It's gonna it's gonna rearrange your brain. So uh here. Okay. You're not ready for this. I'm just gonna tell you ahead of time, but you're not ready, but I'm gonna play it anyway. So here we okay. forget everything you thought about Camden and how, you know, whatever it is, because this is gonna mess you up. So here, here we go. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Keep thinking that. Keep thinking that. Keep thinking that. No, I don't want you to see. Um, yes. Somebody just said my baby. Please get here. They just did what? Said my baby. Do they know who it was, ma'am? Yes. It's my ex. It's my boyfriend. My current boyfriend. What's your address? Um, 1415 Kane. You know what? Does he be a lamb in that fam? You, you know what? You know, I did it. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. I did it. Do they need an ambulance, ma'am? Um, no. I mean, no. He don't need, no. Nope. What's your name? Siobhan Thomas. Siobhan Thomas. Siobhan. Siobhan. What's your phone what? number, Siobhan? You know what? You know Hello? What? You know what? You know what? Siobhan. Yes. All right, you said your baby was stabbed. This is your, your son? Yes. How old is he? Yes. Yes. Siobhan. Yes. How old is he? Yes. 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 How old is your son? My son is... I got to. I got to. 
When I was 14, I had a, maybe younger, I had a Pee Wee Herman doll that had a, one of those pull cords in the back of it. And when you pulled it, Pee Wee Herman would say something. Mm -hmm. And I feel, I feel like Siobhan, Siobhan's responses are, they reminded me of the Pee Wee Herman doll where it's just never going to add up to much and she's just going to repeat the same things and this is due in large part to the the drugs that she had partaken of again so she had fallen back into using wet this night it's like this is why you do not do pcp i'd say yeah i'd, I'd say that you know the night prior july July at 10.30 p.m., wet caused her to fling her boobs out in the front yard. And then uh, shortly after midnight, when she made this distressing call to 911, also the results of wet, I would say. All right, so here's, some, here's, here's, here's the situation. Yeah. Initially, Siobhan accused her boyfriend of stabbing her child, but then made a startling confession repeatedly stating in Pee Wee Herman fashion, I shouldn't, I shouldn't joke, uh, repeatedly stating I did it. So upon receiving the call, police officers were immediately dispatched to the residence on Keynes Avenue in Camden. 
And in true researcher fashion, taking a cue from Kent in the quality research he does when an address is provided in a story, Keynes Avenue, I looked it up, it is still there. Keynes Avenue is still a street in Camden. <laughs> so there you go. Good job. I'm proud of you. Thank you. When the police arrived at the scene, they were confronted with, get ready, a horrifying sight. Zari's headless body was discovered on the first floor of the home. In an additional chilling revelation, Zari's head was found in the freezer. I didn't know this was going to be a child beheading, Sam. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. Yep. That's, it was kind of hard to let it be known before now because nothing on the call really says that. Well, she said that her son was stabbed. Was, can I ask a question? Yes. You said the boyfriend had left, but I thought I heard her talking to another man too. Am I wrong? So it turns out he did, he had left, but phone calls were made and, and he hightailed it back over there. So while the call was happening with 911, he he was there trying trying for a while to get in. So Siobhan was still in the house, located upstairs, and was engaged in an ongoing call with, as we heard, the 911 dispatcher. Officers were really cautious about this, and they approached very cautiously they were aware of the potential danger. They were also unaware and uncertain if Siobhan was, was armed. So they make their way into the home and, and, and kind of a punctuated conclusion to this call. They found Siobhan, uh, as they had breached the door upstairs, she proceeded to stab herself in the neck with a kitchen knife and both Siobhan and Zari were pronounced dead at the scene. Wow. The police began an immediate investigation in the circumstances surrounding the incident, including Siobhan's mental state and history of substance abuse. And the community was in shock. And, and again, like when I think of New Jersey, I think of like sp kind of sprawling suburbia. But in this case, it was really interesting, DCF, uh, and the city made counseling available, which tells you kind of what a what a what a small and maybe close knit community this was, because they made counseling available for anyone that wanted to come because of the situation that had that had unfolded here. So she had lost her child when the baby was a bit like this a baby little baby. boy was a baby baby. Yeah, spent two years. Trying to get back, yep. To within a few months, give it all up, and then take this baby's life. Yeah, you can't predict that. Like that's no. what drugs and mental health issues do to people. That's devastating. Sorry, I'm just no. You're right. That she took her own life too. It's like there's no just to me. Then. No justice. Probably, depending on how long this had happened, a, a moment of clarity, maybe post tragedy. I would I, I can't speak for mothers, but having come to come to and come to the conclusion of what you've done, uh maybe that's what caused her to to commit suicide on top of all this. Yeah, like you said, I mean, drugs in these kind of cases, they, it, when you factor in things like the drugs, the apparent uh, alleged arguments that she was having with her boyfriend the night before, those types of things fueled by drug use or the argument causing a relapse into drug use, uh, especially on something like PCP, the, the results are unpredictable at best and so in this case that's what that's that's what happened here you just don't you don't hear of i don't hear of 
uh, PCP, like that's not, you hear of people being addicted to meth or heroin, yeah, uh, cocaine, alcohol, being, you know, an alcoholic. I, and I was just looking up like how addictive it is. It like rips your brain apart basically. So yeah, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Be- eats your brain away. <laughs> Is it, um, uh, I was going to see if it's, yeah, so it's hallucinogenic. It's a psych- psychedelic, it, it's factored into, it's, uh, it's factored, it's considered, uh, um, hallucinogenic. And so, you know, the, the number of possibilities for the way you're going to view the outside world when you're on PCP are probably myriad. So, uh, you know, DCF initiated a review of its involvement with the family, including the support and services provided. And it, it came to a, they, they gave a statement and concluded that, Hey, we had, we had done everything by the book with this one. And I would agree. I mean, having looked it over there's, you know, they, they emphasized in their statement that the reunification of Zari with, with Siobhan was court ordered court sanctioned that there had been a stringent process to approve that also that there had been a stringent process on Siobhan's part to to qualify for that which makes this even kind of all the more all or all the more tragic because how quickly right that was my point is that she worked so hard for two years to give it up in a few months but that's yeah unfortunately that's what it I think I hate to say it, but that's what addiction does. Yep. Some drugs, you know, we're just bags of meat for some drugs. They're going to do what they're going to do with us once we're on them. And that's, that's a tragedy. So anyway, this one, I I kind of, you know, after getting to this point in this call, I kind of want to go back to the, the news of the weird about Camden and like, just find some more fun facts that kind of gloss over. Yeah. Now I'm preferring, I'm preferring that conversation. See? (laughs) Some people are like, stop it with the facts about a town. But then we get to this point and you're like, please give me some more facts so I can forget about what you just said. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to do a, we're going to do a happy ending. And then for all those listening in, in earball land, we'll do a happy ending. We're going to do the outro music. And then if you stick around after the outro, we're going to do a little bit of an AMA and ask me anything involving the the people it, that are accessing us through the back door. So if you're interested in that, stick around after the the music fades out and and we'll be we'll be there like a hidden track on a Green Day album. Yay. So fun f- f- Do you know what hidden track there was on the Green Day album Dookie? No, I don't have any idea. <laughs> it was a song called All by Myself. <laughs> And it was it was pretty funny. It's just like him just playing the guitar. He's like, I was alone. Oh, Happy so ending. We're done. Yeah, okay, fine. Happy ending time. Here, here we go. It really, you know, again, it's just funny, you know, it's palate cleanser. There's really no history that's needed. It's just a it's a rollicking time here at, at 911 calls. So here's the happy ending. Nine one one police fire or medical. Uh, I'm at the pond. Okay, what's your emergency? I'm at a gas station, and I told the attendant to put 15 in the tank, and I uh, gave $15 to the guy inside, and the guy outside put $45 or something, and now they want me to pay for their mistake. Okay. Um, do you guys have an emergency going on right now, or? I need to leave. I just don't know what to do, because um, I don't have $45 to give him. We don't have an emergency. Uh, okay. This is not a 911 emergency. 911s are for life or death emergencies. <laughs> but I will certainly have an officer contact you there at the station as soon as someone is available. Okay. Do you know how long that's going to be? I cannot make them come any faster than they will come. It'll be just as soon as somebody's available. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye-bye. That's a sucky situation. I'm kind of on this person's side because... You don't call 911. You don't. For it. You know, but okay, so so here let's let's just play this out for a second though. You have fifteen bucks. 
you hand it to the gas station attendant. They put 45 bucks in. Now you're kind of trapped. They're like, you leave, it's theft. And there's nothing you can do about it if you don't have the 45 bucks. So your option is, well, I guess this is going to play out in court. I mean, there's there's no two ways about it. Like, you, they can't just keep you at the gas station, like, I have such a white girl response to the like, I'll just call my dad. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, good point. I didn't because one time I did put like 10 more dollars than I should have in my gas tank. And I didn't know what to do because I only had like $10 and I put 20 in. (laughs) Luckily, Uh... I. What did you, did you call your dad? Of course I did. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I, I wish as an adult man that I had somebody I could call if I did that. I I have done it before where like I've had a couple gas guzzlers in my life and I'm also sometimes distracted. So there was a time when. Sometimes. Yeah. I had an F-250 one time. And this this truck was nuts. It it was a seventy five F two fifty. I bought it off an ex convict, which I only mentioned because every time I got pulled over, uh, it, they always thought it was the ex con's car. And I'm like, look, man, I've updated the registration and everything. I don't know what was going on with this car, but every time I got pulled over, they they came with a gun out, thinking I was this guy. I mean, yes, it was a hand painted camo job on the truck. It was it was sus from the beginning, but what. It also had two gas tanks that were that were uh, that were daisy chained together. So very, very easily, if you weren't thinking or watching it, which I was this one day, it was when I was poor. I had like I needed to just get down to get around town. So I was going to put like eight bucks in and I started the pump and I just wasn't thinking. And I started like cleaning the windshields. With, you know, with the squeegee. And before you know it, $112 later, I was screwed uh, because I used my debit card, but I didn't have 112 bucks in there. And so it made me so mad because then I got the $30 overdraft fee and this thing got like three miles to the gallon anyway. So it's an insult watching the needle just go, look, 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 ha ha. You spend all that. It was, it was a bad time. You buy the stupidest cars. Yeah, I do. I do. I, there, I saw a meme one time where it was, you know, that meme where it's Drake and he's like standing there and he's like pushing it. He's like, Oh no, not that. Uh. You know, he's got the hands up. He's like, mm. and it, and the first frame said, buying one $20,000 car and he's like, no way. And then the next one, he's all like, yeah. And it said, buying $21,000 cars, you know? Cause it's a thing, it's a mentality. It's like, this is only a thousand dollar car. But you get the amount of time, you get one twentieth of the use out of it. So that's the way I look at it. I'm, I'm a bit like that. Also beef, beef has to be a factor in the sale. You know what? We're going to just go ahead and fade out so we can fade into the AMA. So if you hate talking, we'll see you next time on 911 Calls Podcast. Remember, 1159 Plus, if you love talking and you want more of it, 1159plus.com. If you want so much talking, we'll even text you. 1159.com forward slash text to get on our SMS text chat, phone chat. Check us out on Facebook and everywhere else where you're at. And with that, we're going to go ahead and leave it. So hugs, everybody. Bye. (laughs) Welcome to the AMA. The Ask Me Anything for... Where we where we do like anyone should do, if people are accessing your back door, you should always be asking questions to see how everybody's feeling about it. And that's what we're doing here with this backdoor access is 
We've allowed people to access our back door and ask us qu- probing questions. <laughs> oh. I I didn't give consent. I was just forced. <laughs> oh, so, ouch. This is kind of a dry response. Awkward. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Anyway. Also, this AMA is coming up the rear of the episodes. <laughs> Did you think of that when you went to the bathroom? No. Or when did you come up with this? What I was thinking when I went to the bathroom is I had one of those mini panic attacks where I was like, wow, I'm peeing for a long time. Is this going to ever end? Do you ever have questions like that that hit you? Like, like I'll button up a butt. I'll button up like the top button on my shirt and I or like the, the button on the sleeve of a button up shirt. And I keep not buttoning it. It like keeps falling or I can't get it. And in my head, I have many panic attacks. I'm like, maybe I will never button this. Maybe it will never be buttoned. Maybe I will never be able to button this. It'll just go on and on and on and on and on and on. So anyway, that's all I could think about. You I have... also thought maybe I'm di- becoming diabetic because I I end up going, I'm, I like have old man bladder now. I like go to the bathroom a lot more than I used to. That's prop. I, I shouldn't be answering questions like this. That's probably in TMI. the AMA. Somebody's probably already asked that question, format it. So we should just, let's get into this. How is your aging black? Yeah, I'm sure it's here somewhere. We'll just, we'll get to it. You sure, sure. All right. So let's read some of these questions off. Jess, do you want, do you want to read them? I don't mean to delegate, but do you want to read some questions and just see? I can, or you can read. All right, I'll I'll read. So you know what? We'll take turns. We'll just you know, if it feels like something you want to do, do it. Yeah, or I'll do it. So I'll read the first one. Ah, do you really like coins and have had a podcast, or is it just a bit for TCK? Meaty true crime, Kent. Um, I really do like coins. I actually, I I I'm quite the numismatist. Um, I uh, yeah, I. I'm intrigued. The thing that's, if 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 you want to, is that know, a word for coin collector? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. If you want to know, one of the things that I think is is intriguing about coins uh, are is is that it doesn't matter what year. Like when people think of coin collecting, they think of like old coins and like, oh, you're just looking for like 1901 Indian wheat head pennies, which. You're never going to find because 19... Well, anyway. <laughs> Ugh, man, that was nerdy. Um, but every single year that coins are minted, there are there are errors made. So with the die stamping, there are errors made that end up accidentally getting those error, those error coins make it into circulation. So even in 2023, there were there were error misprints that make it into circulation, which then become extremely valuable because of their rarity. So common examples are like a double stamp where the, 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 the die is stamped twice on the coin, but the coin moves slightly. So there's, there's like a duplicate, like a, like a ghost image of things or, or a misfire, misstamp where it's missing something or, uh, some years they've changed the metal for the for the coin, and uh, there there are there are planchets of the old metal that made it into that year's coin stamp. So in a year where there shouldn't be all silver coins, for example, because they moved on to like a copper nickel hybrid or something, you can find silver versions of that year's coin, and those are like ridiculously valuable, not because of the silver, but because it just wasn't supposed to happen kind of a thing. So I'm intrigued. I always love it. Plus, I, I think it's a fun conversation starter because people people are constantly coming across this stuff or, or you know, some estate sale from their grandpa and they're like, wow, my grandpa had this whole like, you know, crown royal bag full of coins. And, you know, suddenly it's fun to talk about. (laughs) Another question farther down is why did you stop the coin facts? Um, I didn't really stop them as much as if you've listened to True Crime Kent, it it is. And and I'm going to say I'll get. I'll get my personal opinion of this, of this, and it's not popular. 
But I really, I know everybody disagrees with me, but I really think True Crime can't oh, could don't. could be a solo show because, like the op, don't the go op there again. Inserts okay. himself in such an awkward anyway. There's so much there that sometimes it just feels like I'm just interrupting for interrupting's sake. Well, there's a difference between interrupting with a, I mean, I am in my own journey of finding out how to interrupt yeah. as well. So I can relate to the difficulty of it, especially when someone's on a roll. Yeah. Um, but I think people like the weirdness of it, like the hymns or the coin facts. Yeah. They like the oddity of that. So Yeah. I don't think it's run its course. I I, I do think I, I mean I want to keep doing it, but some sometimes it's just been like, okay, twenty three pages of script. I, I don't want to get in the way, but um Yeah. But I understand. You know. I mean, I, I know I come across as an an egotistical narcissist who's in control of everything, but Kent puts a lot of time and, and effort into those scripts and, and watching him go through those scripts live during the recording and then seeing that the process of writing, researching, writing those and then doing the episode, he's literally exorcising that topic from his soul as he's doing it. Right. And I don't, sometimes I don't want to get in the way of that because I know he's, the recording session is actually the outlet he needs to get rid of that episode out of his brain. Um, right. It goes, you know, it ends up going through kind of a, a filter of swears and, and a lot of wieners in the process. And he, uh, he do what he do, <laughs> we say on the streets. Um, well, but yeah, sometimes I just don't want to get in the Kyle way. Kyle says oh. that. He- He's the one that asked, and he said that he misses the coin facts. All right. So I'll put some more coin facts in it. I mean, there are always coin facts. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see. What is the most bizarre? Lee, Lee asks, what is the most bizarre, quirky, or dark thing you like that might disturb normal people? This is an easy one <clears throat> because, like, I, I, I have no problem. It, I might justify this a bit. Like, like there are sites out there where s- people are aggregating every terrible thing that happens in the world that's been filmed. You know, like every every beheading in Brazil that's done by a cartel, there's websites that aggregate this stuff. And I I don't I don't do it as a sick pleasure. I think there's there's something in my brain that says you you need to be familiar with this so that in the event that something like this happens right in front of you, you stay composed. That's the excuse I tell myself. But I have no problem watching like the worst things happen to people on video and then like just rolling over and going to bed. That might make me a psychopath. Yeah, but kid stuff can't do. I cannot. N- no, no, no. There's not. No, can't do anything happening. I, I, I can't watch anything happening to kids or animals. Really, I can't. I can't do that. But definitely kids. What's my favorite soup? I'd say let's you know what let's make this one. Uh, you know what? No, let's make the last one a question for everybody. What is the most bizarre, quirky, or dark thing you like that might disturb normal people? Chase. Me. Um. <laughs> just you in general. I don't know. I think the. F- I think just me and as a person might disturb a lot of people. Um. There's been a lot of people that I know that. Um they find out I do a podcast they want to listen to it and then I've had so many people come back and like I can't I can't listen to it because it's just too much it's too dark like mm. um my wife doesn't listen to my podcasts because it's too dark my like people in my bowling league don't listen to my podcast They're like I tried but it's just too much it's just too much to clarify cuz cuz you're a machine and you have multiple podcasts do do they find that tethers is too dark or almost fiction is too dark almost fiction because it's real. Yeah. Like there's, there's, you know, you can, there's a level of disconnect when you know that you're 
watching like a scary movie versus if you were going to watch like a CCTV camera of someone getting stabbed. Like it's, there's just a disconnect on right. Well, I know this isn't real in the back of your mind. You know, it isn't real. So yeah, it's more almost fiction. Um, because you know, it's true crime and some of the worst stuff. And there's a lot of rapes and murders and dismemberments and, you know, a lot of weird stuff. That's real too. People eating other people. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's all real. Yeah. So that's kind of the dark thing. And I, for whatever reason, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, like I can just read about it all day and write about it and very, well, very rarely does it bother me. There are some things that happen where I'm just like, okay, that's too much. But at the same time, I can deal with it enough to still get out a podcast about it. You know, on that, um, I've covered a couple, actually you and I were both on a, on a YouTube channel doing some stories for a YouTube channel called inside true crime. Uh, Matt Cox is the host, uh, former, former con man and prison convict turned excellent podcaster. Um, and we were on a Halloween thing where we were both telling stories and I have to tell you, I, I, th I think there's one, a, a genre that I have a really hard time recounting because I, I have a, I struggle thinking how it would play out in my own life. So I've cup I've couple, I've covered a couple instances of tragedies that happen on on desolate roads where the person is completely mangled by the perpetrator um miss vinson way back in the day when jack and i were doing it uh he, she at, she got pulled out of a trunk middle of nowhere asks the guy he's like please just let me let me go and he's like okay and then he proceeds to cut off her both of her hands at, in the fore near the forearms and then hucks her into a pit thinking he's killed her and she has to climb out of that pit onto the road and then ask somebody in a uh, driving down a desolate road in the dark hey let me hey look at me waving what's left to my arms i need help like I have a hard time wrapping my head around the desolate road needing help thing because, oh my gosh, that's like exactly what everybody is worried about jumping out of the bushes when you're down a desolate road. And then it happens. And how much time transpires between the people that you're shocking to the point where they just punch the gas pedal as opposed to the the the, the good Samaritan that has the composure to stop, you know? I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Jess, what's your most bizarre, quirky, or dark thing you like that might disturb normal people? Well, I used to be able to watch graphic things like, you know. Like a bar chart? <laughs> Funny. Uh, no, like beheadings or uh, workplace accidents and stuff like that. But I am a very vivid dreamer. And so I cannot watch those things anymore because I'll just dream them. And I'm like, I channel like good dreams, not bad dreams these days. Yeah. So, uh, but I would say the most, I really like listening to, um, like victim statements and court cases. So like when they're testifying and stuff, which some people are like, I cannot listen to that tragedy unfold, but I find it very interesting. Yeah. Who better than the horse's mouth, right? And usually at the hands of a lawyer who is like, I got to dredge this story out of you. We're going to go through the dirt, but we're going through it together and that's where the details come out, right? Everything that we read in articles, that's all usually evanescence from an actual hardcore interview that's happened in a courtroom somewhere. Yeah, that's my go-to. I would consider disturbing, but what? again, I don't do graphic anymore because... Dreams. Yeah. Dreams. Well, uh, if you had to give some go-to sources that you go to for court, like court stuff like that, where, like, where do you go? Who do you listen to? What do you listen to? 
Well, I really like forensic transcripts, I think Forens- yep. it's called. Forensic that. transcripts. Um, because it's just pieces of court proceedings, uh-huh. whether it's a victim or someone is a witness. It could be the the person on this, you know. So you like you ca- you you like kind of the yeah. just the facts. Like you're not looking for commentator on it. No, I tried listening to like court TV, but I'm not into the. Uh, like drama behind Pundit. it. I don't want to hear that. I, yeah, I would just rather hear the court proceedings. Yeah, or um, interrogations. Ah, uh, yes. I don't really have a good source for interrogations. I do. But... I've got two. Um, one is uh, JCS Jim Can't Swim, which um. Uh, is crazy. They, I don't know how they do it, but they do a really cool thing. JCS criminal psychology. You can find them on YouTube uh, at JCS. Um, five and a half million subscribers. Like, but what's crazy about theirs is they do the interrogations, but then they always have, they have like expert psychoanalysis on what's happening play by play through the. I don't like that. Oh. Yep. Yeah, you probably hate JCS, but. But yeah, they're long. You've, you've talked about it before, but yeah. I don't like the perspective. I just want to listen to it. Yeah. And listen. There's another one that I to have. the testimonies. I got to find it. Um, that's <laughs> similar to, to JCS, but I, I find it very compelling. Very, they're, I love the, I love them because these, these two channels, uh, they both put them out and they're very long. Like, I really enjoy the length of, of what the, you know, of, I think that's one of the things I like about it is it's not a, it's not a watered down, you know, it's the full meal deal. Like you get the whole interrogation. Um, but anyway, okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, day asked, what's your favorite soup? I. I'll eat any soup, honestly. Uh, when I think like like when I if I had to like go zen for a second and think bowl of soup, um, I I feel like a monk because I don't gravitate toward like your beef and bean and chili and all the stuff in a soup you can find in a can. I go toward like really boring ones, like I, I'll eat any of the cream of, which I know are basically for cooking. That's disgusting. But I'll eat a cream of chicken or a cream of mushroom soup or um You've... or like a pea soup uh or tomato You're joking. Like tomato basil I like that a lot. If I don't have those then I'll go for a, a standard chicken noodle. It doesn't really matter to me because whatever it is it's basically going to end up as flavored cement because I put a whole sleeve of saltine crackers into my soup. So That's gross. Yeah. Um, I think this one's for you, Jess. What does Jess used to say, uh, used to stay awake during ops deep dives into things not true crime related or not complaining? Just wondering for real. I don't mind the jibber jabber, but yeah. So what do you do to stay on point, Jess, through the, what we'll call riveting detail? I don't think I do very well. (laughs) I don't, I drink a lot of coffee. Caffeine. Hey, we're they all no no host has been able to keep up. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it's it, it is a challenge to stay in the pocket with Kent because there's so much detail. And another another problem I have with interrupting is something will come top of mind that I'm like, well, what about this? But I I have a I have confidence that he's already gonna cover it. So again, it's hard to interrupt. Knowing that he's probably covered it somewhere in this, if I just keep my mouth shut, you know. So, <clears throat> um, Teresa asked, "What is your most favorite home cooked meal?" Yes, I love meatloaf. That's probably you know that's my standard. So you guys answer this one. What What is your favorite home cooked meal? That's easy. My mom's chicken and dumplings. Oh yeah. 
and, or and I mean dessert would be she makes my grandma's cookies they're like the thumbprint cookies with the jelly yeah in, in the center oh mm-hmm. that's my favorite I'm starving right now those sound so good <laughs> uh Chase how about you what's uh for me my wife makes a pretty good dish of enchiladas yum you get the right sauce going and are you a red sauce guy or another color sauce green sauce green sauce I'm a green sauce guy okay yep green sauce all the way one thing that i love about enchiladas and maybe you can agree with this or disagree cuz this is you know america you can you can your freedom of speech but probably try to agree with this um one of the cool things about enchilada is enchiladas is they don't line up with the spatula well so when you go to get enchiladas out you're always pleasantly surprised that oh no more enchiladas are coming than should be coming out of the pan i guess i'll have to take them all (laughs) oops i guess these are all mine (laughs) all for me suckers i say to the enchilada pan and the suckers i can honestly say i've never made enchiladas really okay you have homework make some enchiladas before the next 911 call and then we'll follow up and see how your enchiladas went. I will, I'm curious to see what your husband thinks of it. I'm curious to think with your Could kids. I just Google it? it? Oh yeah. Or Instagram it. No, no, not uh, pay, uh Pinterest. Pinterest is your place or ask Chase's wife for a recipe offline. If I remember, I'll send you a recipe. Okay. We can add it to the Good AMA stuff. at the end here if you'd like. Chase can recount the as an A to the AM. No, you can re- <laughs> read her recipe. Um, Carissa says, "Op, if you could go back and change anything you have done with eleven fifty nine media, is there anything you would change?" <laughs> this has to be a trick question. And, it has to be. And remember, I'm I'm listening as you say this, and you can't say me. This is going to sound rough. This is going to sound rough, but moving forward, one of the things, one of the, one of the things I'm looking at other podcast production companies and how they're doing things and what works and everything like that. And then I'm looking at shows that succeed and also have a track record of succeeding over a long period of time. You want to know one of the things that hurts a show, even a really popular show. Do you want to know one of the, one of the things that hurts a show almost inevitably at some point? multiple hosts they they have a tendency to generate loyalties for x host or y host their dynamic is such that the audience obviously naturally is drawn to the dynamic that builds with the 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 hosts on the show and if there has to be a reason that that shifts and i hate to say it but over the course of time life happens right it it is brutal on a show so if i could go back knowing what i know and trying to make make a successful podcast production company and successful podcasts i would probably nut up and try to 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 produce shows that were single host only i know that's hard to say cuz it's not really our thing but I finally did something right. Then. Yeah, Chase say, is Chase, slaying it. You did it. Good job. I did it. I'm I'm serious too, Chase. Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, your shows will probably outlive our show. Not just outlive, but I would say cast a wider net globally than ours. Ours will because of that. Because of the shifts and the changes and the ebbs and flows and the title kind of ins and outs of of co hosted shows. You know, yours are, yours are going to be like, just like the blue chip stock. Like, the you know, it's like investing in IBM versus, I don't know, a taco truck. Mm. Tacos are delicious, though. Op, do you have anything you need to sell for me to purchase? I Okay. I, let me just, let me just take my hands and reach down on the floor and see if I can find. Oh, hey. Little hands, but no. Here's one. I got one. 
Does anybody need a Rodecaster Pro 2? This is the uh, podcasting interface that, that I currently use, and this is an extra one. You're probably like, oh, why do you have an extra one of those? And at one point, I got a little more ahead of myself than I thought I should, than I knew better. I sent this to Kent. And if you've ever seen Kent's phone, it has one button on it, and it is daunting for him. This one has, yay verily, 7,000 buttons. I don't know what I was thinking. It sat in his house for a long time, and it never got opened. It's shiny and new. So if you're thinking of getting into podcasting, maybe buy this from me, Roadcaster Pro 2, because I don't, I, I don't think I'll wear through my other, my, the one that I use right now. So, you know, whatever. Oh, I got other things too, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. Chase, you got a couple questions here. Chase, how did you find 1159? How did I find 1159? So my previous life, I worked in manufacturing and we were allowed to listen to headphones. So I started burning through audiobooks like there was no tomorrow. Like some, I was listening at two times speed and two and a half times speed. And I was working 70 hours a week. And so next thing I know, I'm like, I have run out of audiobooks and I'm too poor to buy new ones because they get expensive really fast. So then I found out about podcasting, and this was back <laughs> in the infancy of Sword and Scale. So I started yes. listening to Sword and Scale, and I burned through all his stuff because it was still he was still brand new. And then a little while later, I'm talking to someone at work, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I listen to these new fandangled podcast things." And she's like, "What do you listen to?" And I said, "Sword and Scale." And she said, "Oh, you might like this other one called Dark Topic." Oh. So then I started listening to Dark Topic, and then all of a sudden, Dark Topic and Sword and Scale had a little baby, and I listened to that, and then I kept listening to Dark Topic, and then all of a sudden, a new baby was born called Crime Machine, <laughs> and then I listened to that, and then other things kept happening. So yeah, I've been listening to 1159 for the whole time it's been around. That's crazy. I didn't know you were that OG of an OG. Mm-hmm. I'm Super barely OG. that OG. No, you're you're more OG than I am. How about that? Check that out. Wow, that's hard to do. So then one day I was on the beach and was listening to you talk about how you wanted to build a media company. And I was like, hey, I'll try. And then the rest is history. Yeah. I and then I I I believe on a on a dark meat live show, I offered you a gig. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's hard. That's <laughs> awkward. Sorry about that. In front of everyone. It's sort of like going on a first date to Waffle House and then standing up and clinking your glass. I'm like, everyone, everyone, <laughs> I'd like to ask Amanda if you will please have sexual intercourse with me tonight. You know, I was like, That's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> What did you think I was going to say? <laughs> to marry her. Oh, no. Not, no, not on a first date. That's gross. No, that came later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really did that. I had my hand down your pants pretty quick there, Kent. Uh, not Kent. Chase. So. <laughs> you had your both your hands down. I two did. different pants. Full frontal. And backle, if we're being honest. Ooh. Uh, Jess, your, your story's compelling as well all i remember nobody asked it's fine <clears throat> nobody asked <laughs> the next question <laughs> yeah see, see, jess is still figuring out how to do podcasting where you, what 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 you need to do is you impose your opinion because then it's content as opposed to <laughs> nothing which is harder to listen to all right fine <laughs> But we do yeah, know. Facial expressions don't uh, come across well in podcasting. So I have a handful of emails from Jess where she was very sternly asking me to let her help. And I finally took her seriously and, and I never looked back. Um, let's see here. Matt. Matt. What? He man. He says, I would like to get an entry-level 3D printer. Can you give me any advice on them and what to avoid? Okay. 
3D printers split into two categories. One's called FDM and one is called resin. FDM is the kind that you might have seen where it's a little tiny plastic thread that goes into the top of the 3D printer and then it melts the plastic and prints your model from the ground up. And it's really cool. Uh, instantly usable once it's done. Pretty strong. Uh, you could pull it right off. When it's done, you just pull the model off. Resin <coughs> uses a reverse process where there you fill a vat full of liquid resin and then underneath the vat there's a clear window and it flashes one layer of the model you're wanting to create which freezes the resin in time cures the resin only where the light is though so it reverses the process so it builds the model just as about fell asleep it builds the model from the from the bottom uh from the bottom up it's backward it is wild. Also high resolution. Like you can do dental printing. Like you could do models for like dentists to use 3d models of teeth or jewelry or anything. Very, 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 very intricate. The problem, the downside to it is when that model's done, it just came out of wet resin and resin is highly toxic, never dries. So you need to clean each model with a myriad ways of cleaning it. Uh, never get it on you because it burns your skin and, and is horrible. But the trade-off is very, very intricate, very detailed models. So I would recommend, if you're interested, going to the three, 3D model route, 3D printing route, go to elegoo.com, E-L-E-G-O-O.com, and uh, browse around under the 3D printers tab and you'll find that they're broken down into FDM printers and three and resin printers. Kind of get an idea on what you're looking for. And uh, you can't really go wrong price-wise. I mean, 3D printing is pretty cheap. I mean, the most I think you could spend on their site is maybe 500 bucks on a printer. And anything in the, anything 150 bucks and up, you know, it's going to give you reasonable results for getting into it. So also you need to have a computer because the computer does a lot of the thinking for you in the process of preparing your models. Anyway, there you go, Matt. Oh, Jess, you got a question. Let me ask you for it. Jess, have you ever been truly pissed off at one of the guys of the show? Yes, you have. I was trying to remember the topic, but there was a conversation that we had where you were you were muted and you were just devil eyes into the camera going, stop, stop. I can't remember what the topic was, but you were you were mad as a hornet. I don't think I've ever been truly pissed off like at you guys. No. Have we ever pushed a topic too far that you were like, no. Yeah. Hmm. No, I just try to let you guys be. <laughs> You're good at letting us be. That's for sure. A lot of people, like a lot of people who don't know better, who 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 think they know, they think that like you 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 moderate heavy handedly on on the show as a producer, but in reality, that's not a thing. You don't do that. No, I uh, even like when we're not recording. I, that's just my defense mechanism to act like a boss, bitch, bossy, bossy lady, but boss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, would you rather be a panda wrangler or a panda being wrangled? I got to be honest. What I would be is I would be a panda being wrangled. Here's why. I think about pandas a lot. And the set your Roman Empire. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you two reasons. One is one is my conservative views. One gets me grumpy about pandas. Because did you know that if you were to stress out a pregnant panda and and somehow cause the pregnant panda to not be able to have its panda baby? In certain countries, you could go to prison because they're that special. It. And this is just me. This is just me, but that's how important those are. But we don't seem to have the same value on human life 
It's more of a conversation and very myriad. So I get grumpy about pandas thinking, damn, those pandas, like they can just like have kids and everybody's like, no, 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 that's got to happen. It's got to have the baby. And then, we, you know, everything else is a conversation about human life. So I get grumpy about pandas, but. Maybe because there's a lot of humans and not a lot of pandas. I, I don't know. Yeah, again, you know, it's what, what I would call, uh, you know, megafauna that we care about. It's pretty, so don't kill it. <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway, let me just zen for a second. Why I would why I would be a panda being wrangled is for the same reason. Pandas are treated very nice. And so if you had to be wrangled as a panda, you're going to end up in a great place. And the process of wrangling me as a panda, kid gloves the whole way. You're nurtured, you're babied, you're probably fed along the way. I'd be a panda being wrangled. For sure. Anybody else want to chime in on this one? No. <laughs> What is your favorite drink from What's Sonic? Your... Oh, I got this one in uh, spades. I got this one. A Route 44 ocean water. Route 44 is the size, so it's 44 ounces, which is way too ocean much for Ocean water human. is... Ocean water. What? It's blue. I don't know. I, I think it's like... Blue raspberry? I think it's co coconut juice. You know, the pump coconut thing. And Sprite, I want to say maybe, or something like that. And something blue. There's something blue in it too. Blue raspberry maybe, but it is delicious. I would either say that or a cherry scotch and soda, which is, I think, also called a lime ricky. Okay. Ocean water is blue coconut flavor Sprite in ice. Okay. It's delicious. That's disgusting. It's so delicious. Okay, Jess, what's your favorite Sonic drink? I would definitely go. If you say gray goose, cherry lime, cherry limeade, cherry limeade okay. all day, but extra limes. Oh. Um, Do you okay? Are you a are you a crack the top open, squeeze the lime juice kind of person? Yeah, you are. Yeah, and I take the limes out because straws, straw clog. No, because the bacteria that can grow on limes that are pre cut really is. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So gross. Is there a documentary on this or something? How do you know about this? Oh, it. I can send you a link. You don't want to know. Uh, I don't want to know. Mm -mm. Lemons, limes. Soup? Is soup safe, though? Cans of soup? We safe there? I mean, if you get into the aluminum... What happened? Um... Okay, uh, something happened technical. Drink from Sonic. Sonic. Yeah, the drink from Sonic. Cherry limeade all the way. Extra limes. Okay. Uh, Chase, do you have a favorite Sonic drink? Uh, anything with Dr. Pepper and coconut. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's my jam. Yeah. Yeah. There's a drink of this. I would say I'd... dirty Dr. Pepper, but that's been trademarked by someone. and Yeah. They'll sue you because they have sued people for it before. But yeah, it's just Dr. Pepper and coconut and sometimes lime, sometimes not lime. Okay. Um, Jess, I feel like you're going to have a, you're, you, you've got an answer all queued up for this one, but what is the best dinosaur? <laughs> the Sneeziosaurus. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Sneeziosaurus. <laughs> oh, my favorite dinosaur is definitely the Elasmosaurus. We've talked about this. Is that a that's a land dwelling, right? No, it's a water. Elasma. It has a long neck. It has a long neck. Oh yeah. That's the that's the possible um the Loch Ness kind of monster. Okay. Yes. I like yeah. that one. Um yeah. We're big dinosaur fans around here. Are, are there are there watched... fossil beds and stuff around you? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> You're just big dinosaur fans and just cuz, just in general. No, we that. They watch like every Jurassic Park, mm. Jurassic World. I don't know. I have to look into that. I never thought about. Yeah, there there probably are. You're in those those bad land type of places so probably there are 
Ch- Chase, do you have a f- do you have a favorite? Yeah, the Utah Raptor. Oh yeah, you ever okay. heard of it? Uh huh. It was it's a cousin to the Velociraptor, but it was twice as big. Yeah, and they've only ever found them in Utah. That's why it's called the Utah Raptor. But where I used to live in southern Utah, there's a lot of dinosaur excavation sites and we used to drive out to the there's dinosaur tracks in the sandstone and they're like you can just go out to them they're not covered or anything i mean really if you were a dick you could go out and cut them out if you really wanted to but i mean it's on public land so if you got caught you did be a felony but there's like dinosaur footprints all over the place and so yeah where i used to live there's there's a ton of dinosaur stuff um I don't I'm sure they've known about these for a long time but Australia is a wild place when it comes to dinosaurs. I don't know if it's because of its remoteness. Uh also maybe Pangaea was still a thing back then so maybe there wasn't a lot of separation between the continents but there are some wild ones over there. Uh there's one called Quantosaur no 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 Di- Diamantinosaur Diamantinosaurus and it looks like one of the long neck dinosaurs, but I also think it eats meat, which was weird because it's long neck dude, but it eats meat. There's another one over there called Australovenator, and it looks like a raptor, uh, but it also looks like a raptor that had a baby with um, like a 80s metal hair band. Uh, it's got like this whole like mullet going on. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So if you're ever bored, look up Australia, dinosaurs of Australia. And uh, I've seen those on Dinosaur Train. Yeah, I love that show. You know what's really cool about <laughs> Dinosaur? Great show. I love it. What's cool about Dino- Dinosaur Train is it, 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 it actually was one of the conversation starters that helped me to to figure out a way to cover some of the the conversation about adoption with Sam. You know. Uh, oh yeah, that's very yeah, true. So I who I don't know what's happening. What? Oh my gosh! Open the door once. Fool me. Open the door seven times. You might be one of my children. Jess, are you kind of witchy? You said some things that make me think you are, think you would get along with my wife. Luther says this, so. Um, I don't know what you consider witchy, but I don't do any seances. (laughs) I would tell you, I think. I I I feel that I'm intuitive. Yeah. I, I would say Jess has a Jess is like a lollipop where there's a there's a hard outside shell and a mysterious core that you know you're like oh that's 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 a fun core uh sh- yeah she's she's uh she gives off a certain impression but I think it's um because she knows better. <laughs> I don't say that lightly. I think a lot there're not too many people where I I believe that they they have good intuition about whatever they're stepping into and that's Jess. She also got a got heart of gold though because there's been times where based on Jess being like Jess is, I'm like, "Would you want to talk to that person and have the hard conversation?" And Jess is like, "No, I don't." <laughs> because I've noticed that she just just looks like a pants suit. In a, in a corporate environment, but comes across more like a like a Winnie the Pooh costume when it comes to like HR issues. So I pick my yeah. battles. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I don't know. There you go. That's your answer right there. Is that she doesn't answer, <laughs> and you can see it in her eyes. She she's a softy. But yes, I'd probably love your yes. wife because. Chase, how often do you make the trip down to Texas? Well, last Christmas, a couple weeks ago, was my first time, but um, my little brother lives there now, so probably I'll be there a lot more often. In the, He lives in Bulverde, Texas, if anyone knows where that is. 
Oh yeah, that's north of uh, San Antonio. North of San Antonio. I was gonna. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So well, I'll be heading out to Texas more often in the future. Go visit my brother and his kids. So Southwest is based there, so you probably have some pretty cheap tickets possibilities every once in a while. Yeah. Well, good. Um, let's see. Sam, how did 11.59 come to be? Long story short, Jack had Dark Topic. We decided to make Crime Machine. Crime Machine did pretty well. We thought we could do better. At the same time that I created 911 Calls Podcast, which really was supposed to be just a segment on Crime Machine, or like a bonus episode kind of thing, at the same time, Jack was like, do you want to do all the business stuff? Do you want to like handle the money and all that stuff? And he literally just handed me the reins for, for what he had already built. And that, that was a big risk on his part. And I, I appreciate him doing that. When he did that, I was like, the best way to do this is for me to create it, to incorporate, to create a corporation. Jack's in Canada. I'm in the U.S. So it made sense. Uh, had a long conversation with him and he was like, yeah, no, just make a company. Let's, you know, and so Jack became a contractor of 1159, believe it or not. And then it was a single owned, single ownership out of my state, out of Idaho, 1159. And then, um, kind of the rest is history. Uh, you know, I mean, we can talk vision and mission and all that, but we're, we're, we're underway with what I would say is the vision. Uh, it's happening a lot slower than I anticipated, but that's po- that's mostly an energy thing on my part, not a vision part. <laughs> I over vision things. Energy is another conversation, though. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Where does Op get all of his cool big words? So. Like coin collecting, I actually really do like words. I, I like I like knowing big words. I I tend to use them a lot when I get confrontational. I did have a teacher also that like in this advanced placement thing that I had to be in for a couple of years, had to because I was with the same kids every single day. It was really annoying and I didn't like it. But I had this English teacher where her mission was to te- was to help us to know better words than the words we were using. And so I learned a lot from her and kind of gained an appreciation for a more robust vocabulary, I guess. I don't really use big words though, do I? I don't. Do I? Yeah. Huh. Uh, let's see. If you had to add another show today, what topic would make the show, would you make the show about? I've got Mateo, there are shows coming and I'm super stoked about the stuff. I want to say stuff, but I can't say stuff. Ah, I, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. Mm. <laughs> I'm really excited about a couple of the shows though. That are I would like to <clears throat> see a show that's a better like since i'm a fan of the uh court cases and uh interrogations um, interrogations and stuff like that i'd like to see a show that's a better version like putting them together not putting the politics or any commentary on it but like piecing them together in entirety because i don't really know of anything like that but yeah is there I don't have the time for I've that. thought about that before. It, it, being being kind of a, a curator of those types of shows, is there a show out there that that maybe in multi-part or something, that's the only way I can envision this happening so that you can get it in its entirety, but is there a sh- is there a, a, a outlet out there where it starts with like 911 calls that happen in a case, forward to the police interrogation, forward to the court cases and it's like uncut just full meal deal yeah no no story or anything from the is there anything that out there that does that that kind of pieces it together just the raw content just 
in succession. Not the raw content. Yeah. Um, not that I know of. That's interesting. But, and also like uh, child trafficking, missing people. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff. Something that's going to do something. Some change. For the world, maybe. I don't know. Not trying to be like Ashley Flowers or something, but. I think the child trafficking thing is interesting in that there was a Sound of Freedom, that movie, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you followed it at all, but the guy that did sound, the, the, the main guy, the main actor, the one that was played by Jim Caviezel. Yeah. Like, lots of controversy about him now, which, and I haven't looked into it, but in my head, I'm like, well, what's to be expected? You're bringing down an organiz a, a system that the rich and powerful use, obviously they're going to try to undress you. Is there credibility to the flaws and are they, are they death nails for this guy and his character and his personality? I don't know because I haven't looked into it, but it's precarious getting into that, you know, sex trafficking um, investigation kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's do it. We'll do three more questions. There's not very many okay, more. Teresa's got one. What are your hobbies are you? in real life other than 1159 media stuff? Um, you guys, you guys answer this. For me, um, my hobbies are... <clears throat> I collect things. I'm trying to whittle down my collections. Um, so, like, I just sold my video game collection to Kent. Yeah, but I also did. collect vinyl records. And so I collect vinyl records. I go shed hunting, which I'm not talking about sheds that you keep your lawnmower in. I'm talking about shed antlers from, oh, that's a like, nice deer shed. and elk. Oh, I'd really like to get in that guy's backyard so and take I go, a look at that shed. I go wander in the woods and pick up antlers off the ground. You know, um, on that. I like to uh, go camping and stuff. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, on, on shed hunting, a lot of people might not know this, but deer, cervids, so deer, elk, the like. Moosin. Moose. They shed their antlers every single year. So when you see a big rack on a on a on a, like a a even a bull elk or a big, elk beautiful rack, yeah, when you see a big rack, that thing has been grown over the source of over the course of a very very short period of time over a series of months, uh, and then they shed them every year. So anyway, it's the fastest growing tissue on Earth is. Elk antler is the fastest growing tissue on earth. They're actually studying it for cancer research. Really? Because they want to know how how the elk's body is making it grow so fast and then stopping it. Because that's what cancer does is it, I mean, it's a, it starts replicating at an aggressive rate. And yet the elk are somehow able to send a signal to stop their antlers from growing at a certain point. Yeah. Unless so doing, you're on one of those. using it in cancer research. Have you ever seen those crazy farms on like I in Iowa where they've like crossbred the the bucks so long that the antlers that grow on them they look more like a rose bush. There's like eighty five points. It's just mm -hmm. a mess. It's crazy. Yeah. Part of that also comes from trauma too. <clears throat> they hit him while the antlers are growing. Oh, they hit the. Come here, dude. Mm. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, that's that's my hobbies is I collect I'm down to like vinyl Racks. records and and um antler and yeah, like wandering out in the woods looking for stuff. I like to go looking for like arrowheads and stuff. I like being outside. And then I like you music have any as vinyl? well. I go to concerts and stuff. Do you have any vinyl records of yeah. Neil Sedaka? No. You're missing I out. don't. I know. Yeah. Yeah, check him out. Check him out on vinyl. But vinyl is king. It's still the only media that doesn't degrade to the point of not being able to use it anymore. CDs do that. Tapes do that. 
hard drives do that. They all eventually will degrade into nothing, but if you take care of vinyl, it'll last forever. Still the king. Yep. That's what I always say. (laughs) (laughs) Jess, how about you? What do you, what do you got hobby wise? You gotta have something. Um, I, I guess like plants, like my garden and my, I have a lot of succulents that I have kept for many, many years. They're hard to kill. Certain house, house plants that I, I don't know, I like to, you know, garden and it's kind of peaceful to like water my flowers in the summer. That's why winter sucks so bad. So, let me ask you: Have you ever run down that that kind of experiment of like music and plants? Have you ever gotten into that? No. Okay. I listen to audiobooks. I mean, like playing music for your plants. Oh no! You ever heard about no. that? <laughs> no. Yeah they they actually say that it it affects photosynthesis. Fun fact to know and share: that that this is now science. This isn't like a, a thing. This isn't guesswork. So on the plant, in the in the in the green part of the plant, right? I don't want to get it too nerdy. But inside of each one of those cells, there's a little opening, and it opens to ingest carbon dioxide, mm-hmm. right, and and everything. They've now found that the that the birds chirping in the morning triggers the plants to open those little tiny capillaries inside of the the part of plant so and and that connects the dot on why people have seen that their plants actually grow better when they listen when they play mozart on speakers near their plant and because the 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 sound triggers the plant's growth process so that's wild that's neat. I, I'm not that hippie. <laughs> Should give it a try. I just like to spend a lot of time outside, basically. Any time that we have free, it's outside. What's your favorite plant? We're going to end it on this one. What's your favorite plant? Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever grown it? Have you ever tried to grow it? I've accidentally grown it before. How do you, how you do that? You throw like if you're like you throw roaches down, like we put them like between the deck board, and then all of a sudden you have a plant that like grows up because there was a seed or something in there. Did you try to keep it alive? Um, no. Ah, darn it. no. <laughs> Chase, do you have a favorite plant? My wife is a plant lady, so we have a ton of plants in our house, and I have one that's just for me, and it's a Marimo moss ball. So it's literally just a a little, I have three of them, they're little balls of moss, and they just live in water. All you have to do is pour water on them, and that's it. Very cool. And every once in a while, you put them in the fridge because they love to be cold. So you literally will put them in the fridge for like 24 hours and then you pull them out and just keep them out of direct sunlight. So I have Marimo. That's my plant. That's awesome. I have like a plant bucket list of like plants that I want to have one day. But the problem is like my house is so small and there's only so many windows. You got to be picky. I have to be picky. And then I also live in like. It's like zone six. So once you, it's certain plants that just aren't going to thrive here right. in the in the winter. So, um, I have two. One is the hollyhock because it is just grows so tall; it's ridiculous. Isn't it poisonous? I know. Maybe is it? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think so. And, well, who cares? You know what? If you eat the green part of the tomato plant, it'll kill you. So who knew that? Some guy that died. That's who knew that. And then my other one is dianthus. The it's a 
kind of a ground cover flowering plant. It smells, reminds me of my grandparents' house. It's fair. Yeah. So, you know, that's, 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 that, this, uh, this, you know, we've been on a journey with this AMA. Um, we've covered everything. <laughs> Someone asked if uh, we're going to do a live meetup in Utah. There is nothing for me in Utah. <laughs> we, <laughs> sorry. Except some of the most beautiful scenery in the universe. Yeah, we could. Okay, fair. fair. Yep, we, we meet like City of Rocks, somewhere like that. You know, Bryce Canyon, beautiful, but out in the middle of nowhere. You know what? So We'd we have to, to. Springdale, Utah. We'd have to do a field party. <laughs> That'd be the best way to do it. Bonfires, everybody sleeps in their cars. That'd be fun. Hey, my friend, his company owns a rock pit. We can do it in the middle of that. A rock quarry. That sounds fun. Count me in. Um, I'd love to do more meetups. I, I need to figure out a way to justify the expense of them having frivolously spent on on a handful of meetups that just cost a lot of money. So I need I need to figure that out. But I would love to do more meetups in the future. So, you know, and on that, maybe we'll end this AMA. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for answering the questions. Thanks, Jess and Chase, for Thank being goodness. here. Thank goodness. And uh, until next time, hugs, everybody. Bye.